Frank Strike Back. The one province miner Ansbach became the ultimate master of Europe. Who is actually more French than the actually French people? Right, it is Franks. Franconia, a nation inside of the HRE. They have one of the most interesting mission trees that you can imagine. If you follow that mission tree, you can create a personal union on France. Furthermore, you create a personal union on Brandenburg and you have a lot of claims inside of the HRE and the Rhineland area. Franconia can become one of the most powerful nations inside of the HRE and even within Europe. It's 1560 and I am ranked the fifth rank and pretty sure soon I will be number one. So how do we start at the Franks? Start creating a nation like Franconia. You need to start as one of the Franconian nations. So it could be Würzburg, it could be Bamberg, it could be Bayreuth. Even nations like Nürnberg and Rothenburg apply to that. We will start as Ansbach. Ansbach starts with a personal union. Bayreuth is his junior partner. Furthermore, we have the same dynasty, the Hohenzollerns, as Brandenburg. So this is actually pretty good. And later in the mission tree, we are able to claim the throne of Brandenburg. But this is actually pretty late in the game because there is a huge showstopper within. It tells you that you need to have at least five manufactories. So how do we start as this little one province miner as Ansbach? The first thing should always be look if Austria is willingly to ally you. If they are not, you can at least send a royal marriage. So that blocks a diplo slot from them and later give you the opportunity to ally them. Furthermore, you start allying certain kind of electors because we need the chance to become the emperor. I strongly suggest you start with Brandenburg and afterwards you try to ally, ally Cologne and Trier. Additionally, now let's talk about the estates. The estates are pretty simple and straightforward. You go for religious state, clerical advisory council and religious diplomats for the clergy. For the nobility, we go for primacy of the nobility, increased levies, aristocratic councillors and supremacy over the crown. The clergy, straightforward, land of commerce, Patronage of the Arts, Commercial Advisory Board. Afterwards, summon the Diet, take whatever mission you like, and afterwards, seize land. With that setup done, now it's time to talk about the armies. We hire the free company, and additionally, we delete the horse from Ansbach. That's it, that are the first steps. The rival setup is actually a little bit tricky. My first goal as Ansbach is actually to get Würzburg under control. Because to form Franconia, Würzburg should not exist. And additionally, we need to own the core of Würzburg. So this is actually our first goal. We will start building a claim network on them. Ally Trier, Ally Cologne, and start building a spy network on Würzburg. With that setup done, it's actually a waiting game, though so we need to um, attack Würzburg as soon as we have a claim on Würzburg and Bamberg. So the second diplomat you will send to Austria and improve relations. You can't hire any kind of advisor because Ansbach is too poor. So set rivals to the neighbors. I suggest you set a rival for Würzburg. Additionally, set the other rivals in a network so that you can maybe look out for for example, if Nuremberg is allied back in my game to Württemberg, Württemberg would be a good rival because you could build a claim on them later, attack them 
and get Nuremberg instead. So these are both totally valid rivals too. But let's focus on Würzburg first. One more thing that you should not forget is Ansbach has a pretty awesome bad ruler, 2-2-1. Though we need to be at least on power on technology or military. So set your national focus to military power. Additionally, something I would like to point out. If you start with another nation like Würzburg, Nuremberg, Bam Bamberg, they don't have claim Brandenburg. They don't get this personal union mission because these two missions, Grandeur, Sans Pareil and claim Brandenburg is unique to Ansbach or Bayreuth because only they have the Hohenzollern dynasty. We made a huge leap forward in the time. It's now already 1451. I integrated Tech 4 military and Würzburg is still on level 3. They are only allied to Frankfurt and Ulm, but I've decided now it's the right moment and time to attack them. Cologne and Trier are willingly to help, so we will them call both into the war. Sadly, Brandenburg's ruler is malevolent and does not want to join, but we do not need them. So let's call in Cologne and Trier. Cologne will of course does not get anything from the war, attack them, beat down the army of Bramberg, call in your leader as a general, hopefully something good, at least one siege prep for us. Beat down Bamberg's army will be pretty easy and if you have the chance, additionally stack wipe words book. Sadly, did not work out in my case, but siege down Bamberg, words book and wait for your allies to do the rest. My war took actually just tiny two years and as you can see, I have 180 relations with Austria but they still do not want to ally me. So what we will do now for Frankfurt, we will transfer trade power and get war reps, get their money and end rivalry with just one random guy. Because as usual, Ansbach is in the Rhineland trade node area. So we need more power inside of the Rhineland trade node. We transfer trade from Vienna. So for Ulm, we will do exactly the same. Transfer trade power and get war reps. This will help our economy massively. Now we're transferring, getting two war reps and trade from two cities with a trade location. So that buffs up our income by 0 0.6 in trade income. That is actually pretty good. For Würzburg and Bamberg, we both vassalize them. That will help us in the beginning to not create too much aggressive expansion and furthermore the emperor will not ask back for any kind of territory. Now you can hand out another privilege and you hand out the strong duchies. Don't forget to improve relations with their vassals because sooner or later we want to annex them. As your first government reform you pick Kirtel, the noble privileges. It will give us more tax income and nobility influence will be lower. Tax is not a trap, at least not until the reformation kicks in, because with the second government reform, our temples will produce quite some money. Sometimes you have to do sneaky things to ally Austria. In my game, Austria has 164 relations with me and furthermore, I have a royal marriage with them. But they will not ally me because Augsburg is allied to them and they are my enemy. So what can we do against it? In my game, Ingolstadt is my rival. So what we will do is we declare a war of humiliation against Ingolstadt and afterwards, because Augsburg will help Ingolstadt, we enforce that Augsburg is breaking the alliance with Austria. And that's the full trick to make sure that Austria is allying you. So as mentioned, the situation is like that. Augsburg is allied to Austria. They are not willingly to ally us. So what we will do is sue peace, break alliance with Austria, get their warps, transfer trade power, get money. For Ingolstadt, just humiliate them. This is an age goal and will make us 
stronger in the long run. Now we've completed one age goal already, the humiliation of rival, and afterwards try to ally. Sometimes it takes just a few days until it gets updated. In my game it took me two days and afterwards Austria is willingly to ally us. So now our setup is done that we can conquer and core provinces without doing the extra step of vacillation. One thing I would like to point out about Ingolstadt. Ingolstadt starts the game normally with a very old ruler. This guy can die. What happens if that guy dies? You get a pop-up in an event that asks you to buy cores on Ingolstadt. You can do it, but be careful because normally Ingolstadt immediately falls under a personal union of Landshut or Munich. One of it will happen immediately. And this is normally in the first two months of a game start. I just want to point it out here in this kind of location because it could happen to you. To take control of the Rhineland area, Ansbach has a chance to get Nuremberg. You start immediately with a permanent claim on Nuremberg. But if we attack them, we cannot take them because Austria will defend them because they are a free city. But as I mentioned in the beginning, they are allied in my game to Württemberg. So check in your game to whom is Nuremberg allied and try to attack them instead. So in my game, I will attack Württemberg and for that I will get Nuremberg as a result. Declare war against Württemberg, call in your allies, don't promise them anything and afterwards just take Nuremberg. Though so in my game I siege down Nuremberg and afterwards I will take them. Be careful, you cannot co-belligerent a free city. So taking them will give you a massive amount of aggressive expansion. So when you do that, calm down afterwards. Nuremberg is luckily a center of trade and this will bump up our economy and furthermore our trade income. So peace out afterwards Württemberg. We don't want this war anymore. For us Nuremberg was the main goal. Of course Austria is not asking back for Nuremberg because we allied them. So now it's almost time to integrate our vassals Bamberg and Würzburg and that will help us to soon make sure that we form Franconia. One thing on a side note, sometimes you have a really bad heir. Just didn't disinherit him. In my game it took me two tries until I have finally something good. When you start integrating your vassals like I do, don't forget there is one nobility privilege that you can give out. It's called nobility integration policy. That makes integration cheaper by 5% but more importantly you don't get the three, minus 3 dip rep. Of course it makes them a little bit more disloyal but this will not help them. As you can see I am pushing forward with my wars to get always every province inside the upper Franconian area into my hands. This war is only for Coburg and afterwards we try to push further into the Mainz area. Mainz has Aschaffenburg, Aschaffenburg belongs to the lower Franconian area and we try to get this province too. But for now let's get only Coburg. Saxony is additionally one of my rivals, so we can humiliate them again, get war ups, transfer trade power and all that kind of money. This will help our economy further. What we will do additionally? Ansbach is a grassland province. It's not as good as farmlands for like for example Nuremberg, but we will dev up Ansbach. We will dev up Ansbach until 30 development though that we can get renaissance, the renaissance and additionally we want to have this large city accomplishment for the age of discovery. 
So let's add dev up Ansbach. When we have 30 development, we just need to wait a few years to, to get the renaissance. When the time comes then that you can get your first government idea, I suggest you start with military. Depends of course on your ruler. I have a 365 ruler, so that's why I start with a military idea. I will go for offensive. Offensive is actually very useful because it makes our troops better, our generals. When the time comes for the second government reform, I strongly suggest you open with regional councils. Regional councils give us in the age of discovery plus 50% local tax modifier. Combine that with courtesy and noble privileges, it's 65% already. Afterwards, you just hand out the edict to your states and this will boost your income and taxes tremendously. Right now we have 4.79 and afterwards we have 5.89. So it's simply one ducat. Don't forget Ansbach is poor territory. So if you have mana points to spend, dev up slightly with admin power and don't forget to build up churches everywhere. The Ansbach mission tree is actually a little bit slow in the beginning. To hit the first mission, you basically need to have four cores of Ansbach. I have six now and afterwards you are able to kick off the second mission that gives you more claims on the Rhineland trade node area. Though now we got claims on Hesse and the Palatinate. Franconian Prosperity Mission is actually a little bit tricky because in your capital Ansbach there need to be at least two buildings. I'm currently building up a workshop and furthermore you need to have three provinces with at least 10 development and you need to have these provinces deft up at least three times. The when you, as you can see, when I'm hovering over it, I've already deft up Ansbach quite a lot, but Nuremberg, for example, would be a good goal to dev them up to. One, two, three. And as soon as my workshop is done, I would be able to complete. My workshop is done now in Ansbach, so now I can hit this mission. It gives us just measly 10 tax income, but that's better than nothing, right? And furthermore, we are able now to form Franconia because we own six provinces and we have a total development of 75. You do not need to have a development of 75 if you are an elector, but there it is actually a little bit hard. Maybe if you start as mines, you could do that. But for mines, you need to culture shift to Franconia or at least set Franconian as your primary culture. When you form Franconia, it will ask you, do you want to have new traditions and ambitions? Though you automatically get the new mission tree. Basically, it expands, you unite Greater Franconia to subjugate Bavaria and Kingdom of the France. This is actually everything what we need. On the center part, nothing changes for you at all. But what could change are the um, ideas. My suggestion is stick with Ansbach ideas. Why should we stick with Franconia ideas? Well, Ansbach on the one hand has 10% goods produced. Franconia does not have that. They have production efficiency. You will get this aggressive expansion as a starting idea and not as a second idea. Furthermore, you lose 10% development cost. Instead, you get minus 5%. Ansbach in the end gets 5% discipline. Franconia gets the same. 
Ansbach gets 15% cavalry combat ability, Franconia only 10%. So I think Franconian ideas are a little bit worse than Ansbachen ideas, but only a little bit. If you start, for example, as Bayreuth, Rothenburg, or any other nation in the Franconian area, I think Franconian ideas are an upgrade. But starting as Ansbach, I think they are a small step down. So we stick with Ansbach ideas. Don't get distracted by the war. Currently, I'm doing a tricky move. I'm attacked Hesse just because of a very simple reason to vassalize mines. Because in the long run, we want to become an elector on our own. And for that, we do the usual trick with declaring a war against the elector and vassalizing them. But in my game, Mainz is allied to Bohemia and Bohemia is way too strong for me so that I can attack them. Though so what we will do is now a tricky move. We attack Hesse and afterwards vassalize Mainz. Now to the important part. Let's talk about the second idea group. The second idea group, we will go for espionage ideas. Why? When we have espionage, we can first of all fabricate claims for our subjects. This is actually pretty pretty helpful because outside of our subjects we can get more claims. And B, we can have straight propaganda with minus 20% aggressive expansion. Mix that up with 10% restoring our her heritage from Ansbach, it's already minus 30. We get minus 40 from the age of objective and minus 10 again if we have 100 prestige. So it's minus 50% aggressive expansion. Isn't that nice? So as you could see, I've vassalized mines and I took Frankfurt as a core for myself. This was actually pretty, pretty easy because I have minus 50% aggressive expansion thanks to Ansbachen ideas. So this is super good and we are not even the papal controller. So what we will do now is we focus more on getting more and more territory here in the center of Germany. We try to get the Palatinate area and afterwards we try to beat down the Bavarians. Because we want to have more claims and in the long run the personal union castles belly against France. But this will take a few more years because right now we are way too weak. One more thing. When you have eight provinces in this kind of area, you are able to subjugate Bavaria. So that's why I'm strongly suggesting attacking Hesse and Palatinate. When you have vassalized an elector and in 1034 there's a little nice addition. When you have AD trust with the emperor and you have 200 relations with them as I do, you can request the electorate. One little advice, when you do that Mainz, my current vassal, will dislike you. They will lose 100 relations. So start your integration up front and then it won't be a problem. Because right now they are at 103, but because I already started my integration, they don't care anymore. Furthermore, because the Rhineland area has a lot of trade nodes, don't forget to upgrade them. I already upgraded Nuremberg and soon I can upgrade Frankfurt too. So this is actually making sure that you earn enough money. Mines, when you have integrated them, is another trade hub, another center of trade. So that's really, really good for our income. So in my war, something really funny happened and I have never seen it. Austria was attacking France to free up imperial land. At the same time, they released the Champagne as a nation. So what I did is immediately attacked them. Sadly, they were allied to Hesse, but this will not stop us getting both of it in the long run under our control. Because 
As long as we have the age of discovery, we can with transfer subject build a claim chain. So I started building a claim on Lorraine, Luxembourg and afterwards I had my claims on the Champagne. Furthermore, because Austria additionally released Picardy, I was, I was claiming them to use the transfer subject claim chain to get control of certain kind of territory. I can now unite Greater Franconia. It will give me more prestige and additionally it gives me claims on all over Bavaria. One thing you need to be aware of. Sometimes the peaceful vacillation is a better option than war. Munich currently is a single province and I have seen that they would be willingly to join me. Though Ansbach has one diplomatic reputation in their national ideas from the start. Furthermore, with espionage ideas you have blackmailing, vacillation acceptance plus 15. This is actually pretty powerful because the plus 15 allows you to vassalize certain kind of countries you would not be able to. This is very very powerful and very useful. As I mentioned, when you go down the left mission tree, there are a lot of good things, for example this patronage of the arts, where you just need certain kind of advisors on level 2, that's actually pretty easy. To create a personal union on Brandenburg, you need to spread manufacturers. And actually, I really don't like this mission because it asks you to build five manufacturers. Certain kind of manufacturers become only available when you have a certain kind of technology. For example, textile manufacturing only comes available with level 11 in admin technology. Of course, you can build farm estates with level 6, so you can build farms on wine and grassland and livestock, but the income is pretty low and that is pretty mean. Though the 15 person good, goods produced modifier are wasted. But anyhow, a fast personal union over Brandenburg could be very beneficial for us. So try to push for these manufacturers even when the mission is not that good. For now, let's try to get as much as possible from the Bavarian land. For that, we will vassalize Munich with our blackmailing possibility and afterwards we try to move into the Landshut area and get all this kind of territory back for Munich and for ourselves. Landshut is allied to Austria, so if you have the possibility like me, use your favor to break alliances. As you can see, this is a promised war against the Bavarians. I'm still doing it, but what happened at the same time the Protestant Reformation kicked in and the one center of Reformation is here on the Picardy area. Luckily, I built a claim chain to them earlier. This was really coincidence. Though so I've declared war against them and I will enforce peace on them with a false religion. That will destroy the Reformation in the French area and other centers of reformation I will crush too because I as Ansbach I want to stay truly Catholic. As explained the war against Picardy was my focus because I wanted to make sure that the center of reformation is not converting to so much land. Now it's time to make to offer them a peace deal, force religion and destroy destroy the center of reformation. One center of reformation done. Next center of reformation is in Brandenburg. And actually that's pretty good because we will use our personal union castles belly against them to peruse them and later to fourth convert them. But before we do that I think it's time to become a kingdom. I have seen that I have 299 development though time to dev up just a random province by one and now we have 300 development and I can become a kingdom. Be aware inside of the HRE 
only seven nations can become a kingdom and these are the electors. The emperor is of course an empire but if the emperor is not an elector he falls back on a duchy state. Though we become a kingdom now that gives us of course more government capacity and furthermore a diplomat. Very useful. Now let's beat down the barbarians and get their lands. Finally we are done building up the five manufactories. I just took some in random provinces. I did not took so much attention based on the trade good. Now I'm able to fulfill the mission, production boom, 15% goods produced modifier. But more importantly, I can almost do grandeur sans peril. Basically, I get a personal union on Brandenburg. To fulfill this mission, you need only 80 prestige at 95 legitimacy. For that, I just need to strengthen the government two times. Now I have 100 legitimacy with grandeur sans peril. Finally, I can get a PU on Brandenburg. And that is what we will do now. We declare a personal union, Casus Belli, against them. We still having a royal marriage with them, but we don't care. So and the trade relationships with them and afterwards we get on a war with Brandenburg for their throne that rightfully belonged to the Hohenzollerns of Ansbach. The war with Brandenburg is over. We enforce our personal union and actually we do that for 15 aggressive expansion. They are protestant and furthermore we have a lot of aggressive expansion reduction. Now what we do additionally, they have a center of reformation inside their country. As soon as we have a positive relation with them, we will enforce our religion on them. That will not destroy the center of reformation, but afterwards we can send a missionary to them and change it. One more thing that we need to do now for our last personal union mission for France, we need to make sure that we own eight provinces here in the south in Bavaria. A few years later, I've caught up the territory, Passau and Oberpfalz, and now we are finally ready to do the last mission, Kingdom of the Franks. So Franks strike back now really hard against France. So this is actually very hard to pronounce. And furthermore, we became an emperor. So now we have lots of force limit, 106, and we can beat down now France. We use our last mission for that. Carthus belly and with that we get one more diplomatic relation and furthermore 1.5 monthly splendor permanently. This is really really nice because in the age of reformation I did not have achieved so many age goals. So this 1.5 monthly splendor kingdom of the Franks is really helpful for us. So now let's declare the last war against France to make sure we have them as a personal union. We call them all our allies one last time and let's beat them down. France is beaten, of course, that was very, very easy. What we will do now is we create a union with them and actually nobody really will care. Take all their money and now we are one of the most powerful nations within the world. We just need to improve relations with them to make them loyal. After PUing France, our next step as the emperor will be make to make sure that there are no other centers of reformation available. So we need to kill Geneva and we need to kill Switz the center in Switzerland. Now we are done with that guide. So let me summarize for you one more time how to start as Ansbach and how to make sure you become one of the most powerful nations inside of the HRE. 
First of all, try to ally or or marriage Austria in the beginning to make sure that they do not uh, call back the land that you conquered. Additionally, if you can't do that, try to vassalize your neighbors. You could start with Würzburg or you could move to the south, for example, Stuttgart, Baden, Nuremberg, and if there is a chance, even Mainz. Try to get as much as power and of as power as possible inside of the trade node of the Rhineland area. Trade power inside of the Rhineland trade node will make you rich. Furthermore, try to ally in the beginning strong nations and electors like Brandenburg, Palatinate, Trier or Cologne. If you are not able to ally them right from the start, don't worry, improve relations, sooner or later they will. Talking about government reforms. The first government reform you will take is Kirtle Noble Privileges. As soon as the reformation kicks in, you will switch to strengthen the noble privileges because taxes will get less and less useful. When tier 3 pops up, you pick regional councils. Because in the age of discovery you have plus 50% local tax modifier. Combine that with strength noble privileges, that gives you a lot of income. After the age of reformation kicks in, switch to representatives of the crown. Plus one diplomatic relation is pretty useful. Additionally, vassal force limit 25%, it's a nice to have. If you don't like that, you can always go for centralized monarchical bureaucracy for monthly autonomy reduction and for cheaper centralizing states. Tier 4. You start with expand temple rights because it gives you more local tax modifier and after the age of reformation kicks in, you can go for lands of the church or you can go for maintain balance of power. When you go for protestant and you do not stay catholic, go for lands of the church because that will be a different title. It's called head of the reformed church and gives you plus one diplomatic reputation, improved relation and more taxes. The tier four is actually different based on the religion you have. Tier five, I was going this time for the dynastic administration because the plus 0 to 2 yearly corruption is, is automatically removed with vetting from the espionage idea. So I do not get any kind of corruption at all. And the plus 1 monarchical power in admin is actually very useful. If you do not like that, go for meritocratic recruitment. Cheaper advisors are always good. Tier 6. I did go for aristocratic court because I need the diplomatic reputation inside of the HRE to get my reforms done. If you do not like that, go for general estates or later when the, when the absolutism kicks in, go for royal decree. Tier 7. Go for locum provisio if you have economic ideas. If you do not have that, go for empower the burgers for more trade efficiency. Afterwards, it doesn't matter so much anymore because you are already the strongest power inside of Europe and the world. Talking about ideas. I've opened with offensive ideas and afterwards I combined it with espionage ideas. That gives me a strong policy, one more diplomat and spy network construction. I love the new espionage ideas because this vacillation acceptance as, a, as an ending for espionage idea and state propaganda plus Ansbach ideas restoring our heritage, you have a lot of aggressive expansion reduction. My third idea was actually economic ideas to build up my country and develop more. Ansbach has minus 10% plus additionally 10% from, from economic ideas. That's pretty good. As fourth idea, you have multiple options. You can go for trade to get more income, or you can take, for example, influence if you want to make sure that you can pass easily all kind of reforms. Another option would be a military idea like quality. 
you already have 15% um, cover recommendability. With quality ideas, you get another 10%. Or if you really want to hear horses roaring, you can use aristocratic ideas with another plus 15%, plus 15% from Ansbach at 30. You combine it with a, um, a espionage policy and that gives you another 15%. Let's call them the Ansbach winged hussars. Who knows? And development cost reduction is actually pretty nice. So you have minus 25%. So aristocratic ideas sounds like a valid pick as a first idea. So one more time, first idea, you can go for quality, trade, influence or aristocratic, whatever you like. When you are emperor and you have destroyed all kinds of centers of reformation, you of course try to push into the reforms. One thing you need to get to push faster reforms is the, in, in Prague, the historical center of Prague. This kind of monument allows you even faster creating new reforms. Additionally, because right, the Franks, Franconia is a little bit special and you own Paris, there is Versailles. Versailles actually gives you improved relations modifier and furthermore, if you upgrade it to level three, plus 20 percent tax income from vassals. So you maybe remember that I mentioned Fluence idea group is very interesting, though you can suck your vassals dry with Versailles, influence and economic ideas combined. Very, very powerful. So what should you do after you've pushed for all the reforms? You do the obvious thing, conquer the world. So that was my little Ansbach guide for the Franks strike back. And I think Ansbach, Franconia is a very, very interesting nation inside of the HRE. I really love playing them. And furthermore, that they are a real challenge, especially for pursuing France. If you like what you hear and what you have seen, please feel free to leave a like behind, subscribe to my channel, spread the news about my little channel that I focus mostly on HRE nations. And if you enjoy it, please come back soon. So have a great day and see you soon. Bye.